Did you know that the animatronics for Five Nights at Freddy's took 15 months to physically build, and that the creature designer for the movie had to publicly announce that they didn't use CGI for them? Well, if you're anything like me, you are stoked for any and all info about the upcoming release of the movie. Stick around to hear a bunch of behind-the-scenes action. Okay, so it probably won't come as much of a surprise that Five Nights at Freddy's fans are passionate. And that means they are absolutely here to support everything FNAF. But it also means you have to be careful about making any drastic changes or big swings with their beloved IP. The folks making the movie have found this out in a big way a few times so far. The first was when the poster was released, and it featured the animatronic characters with red eyes. This wasn't something that had been seen in the games before, and well, people didn't love that change. People made their voices heard, and I think it's safe to assume the movie team took that under advisement. It would be pretty surprising if there were any red eyes that ended up in the movie. But hey, you never know, so don't quote me on it. Speaking of anger, or at least annoyance, about those animatronic characters, there were a few posts online recently that dragged the studio for using CGI. The only thing is, they didn't actually use any. To clear things up, creature designer Robert Bennett had to officially announce that they didn't. He posted online pledging that those effects were completely CGI free. Hopefully that made people feel better. And finally, the fans have been pretty annoyed that the movie comes out in theaters and on Peacock on the same day. The thinking being, the movie won't earn nearly as much if people can just watch it at home on a streamer. In response, the folks from NBC Universal put out a response saying it was planned out this way on purpose. They said it meant people could enjoy it in a theater on opening weekend, or they could watch it like 10 times in a row at home and look for all the Easter eggs. And I'm sure it has nothing to do with trying to get people to buy Peacock's subscription. <clears throat> sure, 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 sure. There are definitely some upsides to having the animatronics in the movie be legit. For starters, they were created by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. And if there's one name that gives credibility in the world of animatronics and puppets, it's Henson. Apparently, a sizable chunk of the $20 million movie budget went to Henson's crew, and I'm sure everyone is happy about that because the creatures all look incredible. Another cool aspect is how involved and complex they are. For example, it apparently takes six people to operate the character Foxy. Each person is moving a separate part of her body, and they have to work in sync to make things look realistic. Hella cool. Of course, having no CGI and all animatronic creatures had some challenges too. For starters, it took 15 months for the Henson Creature Shop to build them all, so that likely caused some delays on a movie that was already seriously delayed over the years. More on that in a bit. And another downside is that the animatronic characters had physical motors in them that would overheat after a while. According to the director, Emma Tommy, shooting had to take regular breaks so that the characters wouldn't overheat and completely shut down. Speaking of those characters, you might be wondering if the filmmakers had a favorite. Well, at one point, a tweet came out that basically pointed to Mr. Cupcake as the favorite among the crew in general. But that didn't apply to the top of the movie-making food chain. Apparently, Emma had a different character in mind, at least on the day she was asked about it. My favorite Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic is Chica, but it changes every day. I love them all so much. And producer Jason Blum concurred. My favorite Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic is also Chica. By now, all of us have seen the various official trailers online, so we've gotten our full sneak peek of Chica, Mr. Cupcake, and the rest. But there was a time before that when an unauthorized trailer was leaked. The internet went wild when grainy footage of what we now know as the first trailer was put online. NBC Universal got their Beth Sleuths on it, and it was traced back to a user named Kaiju Cooper. He came clean, admitting he had filmed it off of his screen after he was part of an online survey giving feedback about the trailer. He gave a public apology, so at least that's something. And the online community seemed to be split over whether to watch it. On the one hand, it was the first real footage of the movie, and people were champing at the bit to see some. On the other hand, it was filmed off a computer screen, onto a phone, didn't look amazing, and so forth. So a lot of fans resisted the temptation. If it feels like you've been waiting for like almost a decade for this thing to come out, well, that's actually accurate. Warner Brothers first announced plans to make a movie version of Five Nights at Freddy's in 2015. But as often happens in Hollywood, there were delays. There were rewrites. There were directors, like Chris Columbus, who signed on and then off again. It got to a point where Jason Blum was getting mocked online for it. It was his white whale. But finally, it got made. And Jason is definitely relieved. 
My favorite thing about the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which we worked on a very, very, very long time, is that it actually exists. You're gonna get to see it. And he's likely even more relieved that the movie is already profitable before it even opens. That might sound insane, but because of the streaming and distribution deals Blumhouse was able to make for FNAF, the movie is already in the black. That would make it likely for there to be a sequel. But again, don't quote me on that. I definitely don't have Jason Blum's cell number. Okay, so if you're like me and you've basically been waiting since 2015 for this movie to happen, you're probably going to rush out to the theaters when it gets released. Or watch it 10 times on Peacock to find the Easter eggs. Or both. Either way, you're pumped. Have any thoughts about the making of the movie and BTS action? Pop them in the comments section below.